could you direct your attention to the flag for the star bangled span uh <laughs> the star bangled banner and then remain standing for the alma mater coming. Um, I'm Lindsay Pineda and I'm Miranda and we are the co-presidents of Wittenwood Student Council. Uh, can you please stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance?
two, three. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I would now, we would li now like to introduce uh, Katrina Ruglis, President of the Board of Education. Thank you, thank you, great job. Please. Good morning, Warrior Nation. Good morning, Warrior Nation. On behalf of the Winton Woods Board of Education, I'd like to welcome you to Convocation 2021. This is a very special day because it is actually our very first convocation in the new North Campus facility. That in itself deserves a round of applause. That's right, that's right. To our new teachers, staff, and administrators, we extend a warm welcome to you because we are delighted that you've d decided to join the Warrior Nation. The last two years were marked with many challenges with the pandemic, but the Warrior Nation stood strong, working together to keep our students and families safe and a priority. I say that to say, you could not have joined a better team of hardworking, dedicated professionals who never lost sight of our priorities, which are our students. And to our returning teachers, staff, and administrators, thank you for sticking with us another year and staying true to our mission to helping students achieve to their highest potential through excellence, innovation, and your true love for our students. We appreciate your dedication and commitment to the nation. And lastly, to our superintendent and treasurer, thank you for your leadership in seeing us through two very difficult academic years. We are confident that your focused leadership that led us through the past two years will lead us successfully through the 2021 school year. We appreciate your continued dedication. Now let's kick off this year's convocation by welcoming high school principal, Mr. Eric Martin to the stage with a warm round of applause. Good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna start first by letting Ms. Ruggles know we're not going back to 2021. Can I get some applause for that? 2020? No, we're not doing that. It's 21-22. That's the school year, 21, 22. <laughs> now first, I would like to just say thank you for everybody for coming out this morning, although you didn't have a choice because it's his first day. <laughs> but it's exciting for me to see an auditorium of almost, well, we have 850 seats and almost every seat is filled with staff and the Warrior family. Almost 800 and 50 seats are filled. And what that tells me, being a person who's been here since, well, I'm going to my ninth, ninth year now. That first convocation for me, we didn't have that many seats filled with employees. So it's telling me a couple of things. One is that our teacher side is growing. So that's something to get excited about. We can clap about that. Our teacher membership is growing. Our OPC membership is growing. And what that means to me is that it gives us a better opportunity to really strive to support our kids' dreams, hopes, and wishes. So it gives us a, a better opportunity to serve the kids of Winton Woods City Schools. One of the things that I know you guys look forward to every time I come to the stage at this time, I gotta get you a little bit hyped, right? So we're a little different this year. So there's not the individual schools, there's two campuses. But then at the end, I should hear the loudest, I mean the loudest applause, excitement about the direction we're going. So the first thing I want to do, can I hear it from the South Campus? Yeah. Oh, South Campus, you're in trouble. <laughs> you are in trouble. You are in trouble. Mr. Locke. <laughs> South Campus in trouble, aren't they? All right, Mr. Dixon, South Campus in trouble, aren't they? Can I hear it from Winwood City Schools, North Campus? <laughs> C 
South Campus, I'm going to give you another opportunity. Mr. 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 Holman, I don't know, sir. I'm going to give you another opportunity. South Campus, let me hear you. Was that support services? Oh no, that was the babies. The babies of the district. Early Childhood Center, let me hear you again. Now oh, they bringing the fire. They bringing the fire. High school staff, you cannot transfer to the Early, South Camp, the early Childhood Center. You can't transfer. <laughs> you don't think that's a problem. All right, so here's the last bit of excitement that I want to hear in my little part, and that's for the whole Winton Woods City School District. There's a lot of folks who put in a tremendous amount of time to make sure we have an unbelievable school year for our young people. So at this time, let me hear it from the whole warrior nation. Let's hear it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I think ECC was louder. We, we were a little subdued. Lock, I'm disappointed. Folks ain't standing up doing the cabbage patch and all that. So we're gonna try that one more time. Let's rock this place. Winton Woods Warrior Nation, let me hear you. Let's go. Let's go. I see you, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know this isn't my whole show, and I have to hurry up and move on to the next person, but I do want to share a little bit of something that's on my heart as I think about this school year and reflect towards this school year. 2021 was rough on a lot of different levels, on a lot of different levels. When I think personally about myself, I think about health, I think about loss of people, I think about not being able to support our young people the way I wanted to support our young people. I think about entering this school year, and although we serve four different classes, I only really know one class. That's the seniors. So I don't know much about our ninth graders. Don't know a whole lot about our 10th graders. And I lost some connection with our 11th graders. So the only ones that I'm really, really comfortable with is our 12th graders. So take that in perspective in terms of as you start this journey this year. If nothing else, be reflective about who you serve. Be reflective about where we've been and where we're going. Take the time to think about those things. Because when it's all said and done, if 2021 taught us anything else, is that we have a choice to do this thing the right way and be the best we can possibly be for who we serve. If it's not about the kids, and it's not about the work, it's not really that important. We are one Winton Woods. We are one Winton Woods. Although we live at different campuses, when it's all said and done, we are one. That's how I choose to approach this school year. Through difficult times, through tough conversations, when it's all said and done, I'm going to rely on my reflection and come back to the realization that we are one and we're here to serve our students. We're here to serve this community. We're here to be the best warriors we could possibly be. So thank you for that opportunity for me to share a little bit that was on my heart. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Mr. Steve Denny, Executive Director of Business Services for Women in City Schools. Well, now that you're sufficiently fired up, good morning. I cannot tell you, it's difficult to express, let me say it this way, it's difficult to express how great it is to look out and see all of you here. Um, like Mr. Martin said, it has been a heck of a year. Um, it's been very challenging, it's been very trying. Honestly, a year and a half, but we're here. We made it, you did it, we did it, and it's great to be here in the new building. So I would like to just take a moment and say again, Please give yourselves a round of applause. Please. 
So I have the very uh, honorable distinction this morning of being able to introduce a team of people, um, and it's a team uh, that helped to deliver the building we're sitting in right now, uh, helped deliver the South Campus. Um, we would not be where we are without them, just as we battled through a pandemic to educate children, which is our core business, and supply valuable support services to the district. They also battled through a pandemic to be able to build these new schools. So it's no small feat. Um, I think we owe them a pretty tremendous debt of gratitude. And I'd like to just pause and, and recognize them, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to be able to do that this morning. Um, a lot of folks had conflicts, so I'm going to break the list into two groups, if I might. Um, the first group is going to be the folks that were able to be here with us this morning. And uh, there are several of them, and so I will read their names. I would ask if you don't mind, if you just hold your applause until the end, and then I'd ask you to please go nuts for these folks, because they um, really stood in the gap in very trying, difficult circumstances. Um, delivering a, a $93 million of construction is challenging under any circumstance. Under the circumstances of a global pandemic, um, it's hard to even relate what that was like. So um, I'll introduce them, and then I'll also want to recognize the folks that couldn't be here this morning. Uh, there were a lot of folks with conflicts, but I, I do think it's important to just recognize those team members as well. So we have various groups represented. We have Skanska Construction, Megan Construction, SHP, Moats Engineering. Those are the principal groups that we'll recognize today, and they all had access to dozens and dozens of subcontractors and coordinated them, but we'll just focus on that main group. So if I might, again, hold your applause until I read the list. And folks, if you'd stand and remain standing, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Aaron Byerly. Aaron, were you able to make it this morning? So, no. Oh, Aaron, okay. Aaron, also uh, Danny Mitchell. Uh, Aaron, by the way, is the lead architect. He's actually the lead designer for this building. Uh, Danny Mitchell is South Campus Site Superintendent with Skansk Construction. I'd also like to introduce uh, Evans Nwankwo. Would you stand, Evans? Mr. Nwankwo. Uh, Evans is the president and CEO of Megan Construction. Uh, his wife, Kathy, I'm hopeful maybe she was able to make it this morning, was not able to make it. I'd still like to make sure we recognize her. She's vice president of Megan Construction. Jeff Parker, architect, SHP. Were you able to make it this morning, Jeff? Okay. Uh, Chris Soto, project manager, Skanska Construction. Uh, both campuses. Uh, and Dennis Wade, project manager, Megan Construction, North Campus and South Campus. And finally, uh, sorry, but there's two more. Uh, Jeff Jacobs, business development director for Megan Construction. And finally, lastly, but definitely not least, Jeff Williams, North Campus site superintendent with Megan Construction. Folks, would you please give them a warm round of applause. <laughs> I'd also like to uh, recognize the following folks, and again, I'll read some names. These are the ones that, by the way, did I miss anybody that was able to show that I didn't, that I got mixed up in the RSVB process? Anyone from Megan, Moats, Skanska, or SHP? Okay, all right. So I'd like to read these names as well, just make sure that we recognize them. Um, their services to our, our students, staff, community, schools, and district has been invaluable. Um, Kyle Anspach, commissioning engineer, Moats engineering. Lydia Breitstein, mechanical engineer, Moats Engineering. Uh, Pete Becker, again, with Skanska, was uh, not, not able to be here, but I want to make sure I recognize Pete. Uh, Jerry Durr, construction supervisor with SHP. Jenny Gallo, South Campus interior designer, SHP. Kinsey Harmon, North Campus interior designer, SHP. Carrie Malatasta, North Campus interior designer with SHP. Allison McKenzie, our project manager for the entire project, also with SHP. Ryan Needs, um, special shout out to Ryan. Ryan is the project manager for the state of Ohio, the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission, and is a fantastic human being and a great person to work with. Um, Russell Miller, the lead architect on the South Campus with SHP. Ugo Nwankwo is the lead accredited professional with Megan Construction and project manager. And finally, Todd, or sorry, Jeff, Jeff Parker, architect SHP, and finally, Todd Thackeray, architect with SHP. Folks, would you please just join me in acknowledging them as well? So as we head into this year, I would just invite you, remember why you got into this. Whether it's your first year 
as a teacher or staff member or support staff or operational staff, remember why you got into this. Maybe you're a 29th year veteran. Remember why you got into this and keep that at the forefront as you go into this year. There's still question marks this year. There's still things we're going to have to figure out. You battled through the craziness of no parking here. Congratulations. There's things we're going to have to figure out. What I know is we'll get through it. We always do. We're warriors. Um, before I hand the mic off to the next speaker, I'd also like to be sure I thank our Board of Education, past members and present, for helping bring us to where we are now with the new buildings. Uh, Superintendent and Treasurer, I'd like to thank them as well for their vision and their leadership. And I'd also like to be sure, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, to thank our community and our voters. They voted to do this. They accepted increased taxes to support what we do and the vision for what we have to reimagine education and create better futures and better outcomes for our students every day, every child. So with that said, uh, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, and that's Ms. Ann Stankiewicz, president of the Wentworth Education Foundation. Good morning. I encourage you all to sit back and relax and enjoy this next presentation because this is the stress-free morning announcements. So um, I'm here today. I am Ann Stagowitz. And I'm here today representing the Winton Woods Educational Foundation and our board members, Priscilla Franklin. You can raise your hand. <laughs> Sean Hamilton, Randy Lemon, Eileen Manera, Liz McCardle, Leanne Montgomery, Lisa Middleman, Cami Seymour, Essie Sterling, and our soon to be member, Mana Up the Grove. Thank you. Well, these names are probably familiar to many of you, they represent past school board members graduates, Winton Woods teachers and staff, and active community members. But sadly, there is one name that is conspicuous in its absence, John Pennycuff. Mr. Pennycuff recently passed away. John was a driving force in establishing the Winton Woods Educational Foundation. He was a tireless warrior and a driving force for educational opportunities for our students, staff, and community. He will truly be missed by us and by all those who had a chance to work beside him for the betterment of our schools, and those who may never have seen his hand in the process, but benefited from his dedication and activism. Our loss is heavy, but we will continue to support this cause that was near and dear to his heart. So I am hoping that this year will be an exciting new beginning. New buildings, new colleagues, and the end of the cicadas. <laughs> However, the challenges just keep coming, as I guess they always will. And we don't always have a say in how to resolve them, but we do have a choice in how we view the challenges around us. Keep in mind that you are exceptional and you're here for your own unique purpose. Celebrate the victories and embrace the opportunities to improve. Remember that the Winton Woods Educational Foundation is here for you. We support your efforts and applaud your dedication to our students. For those of you who are not familiar with the foundation, we are an independent nonprofit group dedicated to furthering the educational opportunities for our students by supporting new and creative ideas to help them excel and have experiences they might not otherwise have. As of today, I am very happy to announce that we have provided over $112,688 in grants since 2009. Yeah. And this has impacted over 8,500 students. 
So grant projects have been as varied as a school-wide art sculpture project, private voice and instrumental lessons, a coffee cart project to further communication and work skills, and many other worthwhile ideas suggested by you. So if you're interested in seeing all of our projects and ideas that we've supported, please see our website at wintonwoodsfoundation.org. Now, you may ask, and I hope you do, how do you do it? Well, did I mention that today we're kicking off our foundation fundraising campaign for the 21-22 school year? You have the exciting opportunity to be entered in our grand gift card raffle with over $700 in prizes, five $100 Visa cards, three $50 Amazon cards, three $25 Kroger cards, and others, all donated by caring individuals. You just need to donate by midnight on Monday, August 9th. I think that's today. So, uh, to be entered in the first and biggest of several drawings for which you will be eligible. Those missing the deadline but still giving will be included in subsequent drawings. You've already received payroll deduction forms, an easy, painless way to give, but we are also accepting cash, checks, PayPal, and now, thanks to Eileen Manera, Venmo contributions as well. <laughs> you go, Eileen. <laughs> We're, but we are always looking for alternative funding sources to expand our funding base. We are part of Kroger Community Rewards and Amazon Smile. You just have to go online and designate us as your charity of choice. Uh, we are also a recognized charity on Facebook for those who, of you who like to celebrate birthdays, et cetera, by setting up a fundraising goal. And while you are checking out our website, you will find information on our Purposeful Giving Program, where you can contribute to memorialize a colleague, honor a friend or family member, or celebrate a special occasion. The recipients of their family or the recipient themselves will be sent a letter notifying that your contribution was made in their honor. Finally, we have several fun days and ways to share. We will once again collaborate with Grand Finale Restaurant in Glendale to have a grand dinner um, in February. We are looking into the possibility of providing volunteer services to a large scale event such as the Flying Pig, and finally, we are exploring opportunities to apply to local and national corporations who offer grants to nonprofits like ours who support educational causes. So look out for emails from the Winton Woods Educational Foundation updating information on dates and times. And let us know if there are any fundraising events you think would be a good way to meet, socialize, and celebrate the Winton Woods School community. Okay, now for the moment you've really been waiting for, we are proud to announce the recipients of the Winton Woods Educational Foundation grants for the 21-22 school year totaling, drum roll please, $12,750. $12, so please, yeah, yeah, that deserves a hand. Please join us on stage when your name is called to receive your really big checks and to remain with us until all the grants have been announced. Oh, we have the checks. Oh, we, these, these people are good. <laughs> Number one, Little Blossoms Early Childhood Education Village, $750. Cherie Davidson and Emily Perkins, come on down. While they're coming up, I'll announce number two. Dramatic play area. The village, again, $3,000. Yeah. Rebecca Davis, oh, excuse me, Rebecca Dennis, and other team members, Taryn Atkins, Jessica McCann, and Denise Polly. You're all welcome to come up. All right.
This is so fun. <laughs> Number three, Clarity Acapella, Winton Woods Campus High School, North Campus High School. I'll get used to saying these new ones after a while. Um, Kel Kelsey Demange, $1,000. Now, Kelsey's grant is a set-aside um, in case that other funding would not meet the needs identified by her grant. So we're helping, hoping to help her out. And finally, our last but not least grant is the Matinee Musical Grant for Winton Woods North High School, $7,000. $500, the high school music staff, represented by Danny Ashbrook and any others from the group that want to come up. And I want you to know that Matinee Musicale is a separate nonprofit group um, that has been helping support our music programs with money distributed through our foundation. So they help us out. Thank you, Matinee Music Out. All right, so let's hear it for the winners. Okay, you can return to your seats and we'll, we'll keep the checks. Your checks will actually be distributed yeah. through the yeah. treasurer. <laughs> All right. Thank you to everyone. Um, we love the grants. We love giving um, you an opportunity to expand what you do educationally. Um, and while they're returning to the seats, we want you to know that really there are no losers. We were able to direct our other grant applicants to alternative funding sources. So everyone's a winner. And don't forget, you jot down those big ideas that you get throughout the school year and enter them at our grant submission date in February so that you too can be a big check winner. Finally, I just want to say thank you for all your support and for all that you do. And I would like to introduce the co-presidents of the Winton Woods Teachers Association, Ms. Trina Baker and Ms. Anna Owens. Just to be clear, I do want you to say good morning back to me. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. It's great to be back for another year of learning and growing here in the woods. I am Anna Owens. My preferred name is Charlie. And I am the new co-president of the WWTA, representing the 7 to 12 side. And I am Trina Baker. I am the co-president of WWTA, representing pre-K through 6. This is such an exciting time for all of us. The buildings are almost completed, and I, for one, am looking forward to settling into my new space. I'm eager to connect with those of you that I know, or to, for those of you that I don't know, and to reconnect with those of you that I do know. We are looking forward to seeing our students in person, even while wearing a mask. This year, like any other, is bound to present us with opportunities to grow. As we navigate growing pains, remember, we are stronger together because we are warriors. And now, words from your OPSI president, 
Shonda Ferguson Gordon. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning and welcome. Sisters and brothers of OC and other support staff, board members, Superintendent Smith, administrative staff, and teachers, I am so excited about being in the new, brand new campuses we are happy to be a part of. OC members and myself are ready to help support our staff and students in the coming school year and beyond. We look forward to being a part of this for a long time. We will be meeting in the room 1756 for our OC meeting following the convocations. Let's go Warriors. I am honored to have the responsibility of introducing our district's leader, Mr. Anthony G. Smith. Under his leadership, our district has built two brand new campuses that will be fully operational to serve the communities to start the school year 2021 and 22. Please help me introduce our superintendent to the podium, Mr. Anthony G. Smith. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? All right. So um, this first row, there, it can't be you, Mr. Martin, and unfortunately, Ms. Jordan, it can't be you because you work with me. All right. But the person that, would, that was going to sit on the front first row, there were two tickets to Jamaica, so no one sat there, so we'll hold those back for next year. All right, so I tried to get you there, Mr. McGowan, you, you fought me. All right, I'd like to um, say a special thanks to uh, the Winton Woods High School students who helped pass out programs, if they're around anywhere. The Child Nutrition Department, the best nutrition department in the world. OPC and WWTA for providing the refreshments. And where's Danny Ashbrook with the best band in the land? I'd also like to introduce Ms. Katrina Ruggles, board president. Thank you. Dr. Johnson, is Dr. Viola Johnson here tonight? I mean this morning, this feels like night to me. Uh, Jeff Birdie. John Cupoletti. We have a meeting tonight, so they're probably there. Um, and of course, I, our, my main guy who is a, uh, he's, this guy's a baseball coach for Purcell Marion. And uh, no, don't, don't, don't scream for that. But he's a baseball coach for Purcell Marion. And uh, I hope that uh, we get a chance to play those guys. And that's my guy, Mr. Gino McGowans. Thank you. All right. So my central office staff, uh, executive director of business, KD, SD, we call him everything. All right, Steve Denny. All right, thank you, Mr. Denny. Where's Mr. Seymour, the treasurer, the guy with the money? He's not here. All right, okay, I was gonna say board. You see, I come, but he doesn't, well, yeah. Community and Public Engagement Coordinator, Ms. Karina Denny. Amazing. Executive Director of Teaching and Learning, Dr. Adrian Martin. Executive Director of Teaching and Learning 712, Dr. Tamara Raglan. Executive Director of Human Resources and Legal Services, Ms. Courtney Wilson. And behind her name is Esquire, so try not to get in trouble, folks. <laughs> Director of Student Services, Ms. Tanya Bray. 
Of course, this is the brainchild of the world, Director of Technology, Ms. Rhonda Hobbs. Last but not least, uh, the EBIS supervisor, Ms. Vernita Kilgore, who keeps all of our numbers straight to make sure that we are counting kids the right way. Ms. Kilgore, are you here? And not on my list necessarily, but always in my brain and in my heart and my spirit, my executive assistant who makes my world go great, Ms. Jeanette Jordan. Thank you. I know you didn't notice, but she was standing, but she's, she's small. All right. She's small. I didn't say she was short. She's small. All right. Yes. So there were four students, um, not this year, but the year before, just uh, before convocation. And they went to Mr. Martin and gave him some information and said, Mr. Martin, I heard some teachers talking about the superintendent. Have you ever had a situation where someone's talking about you, but you're not in the room and you don't know, but they're talking about you? Anybody ever been there? Okay. All right. And so the conversation was real sim simple when it was, so are we going to have convocation? And they were talking about convocation. And one of the teachers must have been new. She asked, well, what do you wear for convocation? And they were like, hey, you can dress casual, you can wear spirit wear, wear whatever you want. And I didn't know the joke was about me, but these four students told me the joke was about me. And the teachers had a, I guess, just a conversation. What do you think the superintendent's going to wear to convocation? And the joke was, another damn blue suit. All right? <laughs> so this time, I did it a little different. All right? So teachers, what I would like for you to do, there are four of you, we know who you are. We would like for you to report yourself to the principal, turn yourself in, we will find you. And as far as the four young ladies who gave me the information, they're on the picture of the program, they've already graduated, so there's nothing you can do to them. All right, so I just wanted to let you know. All right, convocation. We are excited, so Ms. Denny, let's roll. Everybody knows about COVID. Everybody knows how it just rocked our world a little bit, took us by storm, took us by surprise. But I would have to say that the people in this room, the people in the audience, the people that have supported us tremendously did everything possible to make the world work for our students. The virtual world was very, very different. For every person out there in America who said, I can be a teacher, they decided, no, I cannot. That work is difficult. Time out happened to be a brand new place in people's homes, all right? There were kids who thought they, are, they were living in time out because parents were putting in there so frequently. Teachers were calling in trying to assist and kids were rebelling. I want my teacher. And on the other side of the coin, there were students usually saying in the classroom, I want my mom, all right? So moms were trying to turn kids in, kids were trying to turn moms in, and it became a very, very interesting adventure. But we have prevailed. Our kids have soared, they have worked tremendously, they have been coming just incredible young people to say that COVID was here, and now teachers, and now staff, and now bus drivers, and now food service supervisors, and maintenance folks, and everybody under the sun, help me get through it because we know that this is not the way school is supposed to be. We had kids in preschool that had never met their teachers. Students in kindergarten that had this whole hype of what school was supposed to be about that had never met their teachers. And so we had to kind of pull it together and figure it out and make sure that every child had an opportunity to be successful. We had teachers who had never met their classes never talk to any students, never talk to the parents, only by remote or some kind of long distance opportunity like a cell phone. So COVID is here and we will prevail. The Delta variance is, is, is upon us and we will prevail. Why? Because as the people mentioned before me, we are warriors. So the state says, here are some new guidelines. And I am happy to say that the meetings that I've been in with staff 
and not just teachers, but all staff, the state is saying, we will give you a pass to say that this year we're going to hold you, hold you harmless as it relates to the report card. You know what makes our staff so amazing? They're saying, regardless if the state holds us harmless or not, we're going to trudge forward and make everything work for our students. So there's no rating in any of these categories. No ratings. No A, B, C, D, or F. The state is now talking about moving to another platform where you get a star for each thing that you are successful with. Now, where's Ms. Stiles? Raise your hand. Best, wonderful, incredible. Preschool, preschool principal in the whole world. I voted for her. She's the best. And what makes her work so amazing is she cares for every student the same way. They all get the same amount of love. So thank you, Ms. Stiles, for making us a five star. All right? So there were people in the community, people in different areas, other superintendents, just all around saying, Winton Woods does not do the best. They are not the best. Well, I have to tell you, they're wrong. We are the best. And the other part that people have to understand, it is very hard to say we're not doing an incredible job when we had over 300 graduates. That is not easy. So Principal Martin, and to your team, thank you for all your hard work and dedication. We appreciate you very, very much. When you were in school, now this is supposed to be an honest show, all right? But when you were in school, how many of you were honor students? Okay, I didn't say you sat next to the honor students. You were an honor student in the honors category, not your own category that mom and dad gave you. You know, you put the little certificate on the refrigerator and say, oh, you're my baby, oh, you get a star. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a real honors certificate. Well, some districts have none. They have no students that are honors certificates, that received honors diploma. Winton Woods City Schools have 40. We should be really ready to celebrate that. How many of you have seen this great bus coming around? Winton Wood City Schools became very a trendsetter with the Nutrition is the Mission bus. Now everybody has a bus, all right? But where's Mr. Mark Doctor? Is he here? Mr. Doctor, thank you. Nutrition is the Mission bus. So my, my team understands how I like challenges. Mr. Doctor is saying, wait until we get the nutrition is the mission plane, and the nutrition is the mission boat. Uh, I don't know if other districts will be able to keep up. And uh, Mr. Martin is a very courageous guy, him and Jeremy Day, and they'll be the campus coordinators of our two campuses. But what we'd like to do, we, we're going to have a big celebration very, very soon where those two guys are going to come out of uh, two hot air balloons and just kind of launch this thing. So I'll keep you guys posted. If you guys thought that we were going to have a concert today with the um, noteworthy group we're called JNS, it's called Jordan and Smith, we're not performing today. Uh, we've been on tour all year and we're a little tired, so we'll, we will be back next year. So there will be no performance. I know, Miss Jordan, I know. JNS, JNS will not be performing tonight, so, or this morning. So if you want to leave now, you can. Lock the doors. All right, you heard Stan Sanskowitz talk about this pioneer, this incredible guy, Mr. John Pennycuff. This guy is an amazing, amazing person. And I got permission to call him Mr. P. And people think that I'm calling him Mr. P because of his last name, Pennycuff. It was because he was Mr. Professional. All the time, every day. Always gave good advice. Always supported the district in any way that he could. I believe that he was on the board for about 27 years. Is Miss Miranda here? Okay, Miss Miranda, come up, please. One of the things that we wanted to do is we're going to dedicate a part of this building to Mr. P. And the part of the building that we're gonna dedicate is on the North Campus, and it is going to be called the John 
a penny cuff wall of fame because he is on that wall along with his wife and I think that it would be very fitting to make sure that we celebrate it the way that we need to because he is a pioneer for the district. So we will have a dedication ceremony very, very soon for the John A. Pennycuff Wall of Fame. So I invited Ms. Miranda to come up and I wanted her to say a little bit about Mr. P, but I also wanted her to talk about something. She is our state rep, and she has done a tremendous job representing Wentwood City Schools as well as the other districts in her, under her umbrella. I'd like for her to give us a little bit, just a small piece. She's very passionate about this, so be very, very aware. One of the things that Mr. Pennycuff fought so, so diligently about is funding for schools. He knew that funding was not appropriate. He knew that there were lawsuits all up and down the state about funding in Ohio. And recently, I am very, very pleased to let you know that Ms. Miranda has been very, very supportive about the funding formula uh, for our schools. So I wanted her to give a quick overview of what that funding formula is like and how we should stay tuned to the next version. Ms. Miranda. Superintendent Smith. I'm not going to take his mic off of him. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> Let so me grab you one. Someone bring me a handheld. Come and thank you, Jeanette. The whole of the wood goes around and around. And the crowd applause for you. Thank you. Ooh, I sound better on this one. I sound like Barry White. Okay, so before I begin, Enrollment Center, I know I owe you tons of paperwork. I promise it's coming. I get all of your pieces of mail. I'm a little bit busy, but I promise I will get it to you as soon as I can. Thank you for all you do. Um, so good morning. Um, I'm so thrilled to be here with you today as we move into the 21-22 school year. And who would have thought that the last year and almost eight months would have transpired like it has. I am very, very proud that all three of my students go here. One who's in the back that just played for you on the drum line. Shout out to Audrey. Yes. I love you. Love you, my baby girl. So I'm not particularly biased about Winton Woods, but Winton Woods is the best, and I am so glad that you are all here and you have chosen Winton Woods to teach and for your professional educating career. Um, so, Superintendent Smith told you a little bit about school funding. How many of you know by show of hands that school funding has been deemed unconstitutional for the past 30 years in the great state of Ohio? We finally fixed that this year. So we have finally passed fair school funding in the state of Ohio. Thank you. Out of all of the crazy things that we have done and fought over in your state's capital in Columbus, the fight of extremism, the fight about wearing masks, not wearing masks, getting vaccinated, not getting vaccinated, we finally did something good together in Columbus. And I am so very, very proud of that. Winton Woods will be getting more money, which we know is fantastic. Princeton will be getting more money, and every other school district in the state will be getting more money. And that is something that we have never been to able to deliver on for a number of decades. So very, very proud to be a part of that success successful rendition of this. And I just want you all to know that I value everything you do here, sincerely. Like I said, my kids go here. I wouldn't dare send them anywhere else. I am so very proud of everything you are doing here. Hi, Ms. Perkins. <laughs> Sorry. My second daughter will be going in Ms. Perkins' class. I'm so excited. Also, shout out to the preschool team and Miss Elizabeth Stiles, because who knew we could get a four-year-old to sit in front of a Chromebook for as long as we could with your amazing teaching staff. So thank you. It was a struggle in the Miranda household, but we've, we did it <laughs> somehow, some way. I don't know, but thank you for everything you do. Uh, but basically, what I want to tell you all is thank you for being here. Thank you for being in this room, in this particular school district, under this leadership. Where do you go? There, there you are. are. <laughs> there you are, Superintendent. 
This is an amazing time to be a part of Winton Woods, and I am so thrilled that you all get to teach in these brand new state-of-the-art buildings this year. I will continue to fight for you in the State House to keep school funding a reality, constitutional school funding, to fight for your pensions and everything else in between. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words today, Superintendent Smith. Thank you to all of you for everything you do, um, and go Warriors! That was amazing. Thank you. Don't step off. Don't fall off on there. <laughs> you know, when you, when you have this earpiece on, uh, it's a little hard to hear. So I heard State Rep. Miranda say there'll be more money for Winton Woods and we'll be getting Princeton's money. Did, did she say that? <laughs> okay. All right. I got it right. All right. So this is this um, amazing campus where our students have figured out this is the place to be. Mr. Denny and his team, oh, what, an, what, an, what an incredible person, what an incredible guy. We wanted to make sure that we were supposed to open school like right now in August of 2021. Principal Martin, uh, Principal Sanker, the rest of the people on the, in the North Campus, they put their heads together and figured out, can we open school for March even though it's ahead of time? We did it. It was an amazing turnout. The prom was there. The awards program was there. The honors diploma students were there. And we were able to celebrate in a way that we couldn't have celebrated without us starting it early. So thank you. This auditorium that you're in, I remember seeing the pictures, the renderings, and I kept asking the architects, is it gonna look like this? And I remember seeing uh, Evans, and he says, Superintendent, it's gonna look like this. And if you look around, it looks like this. How many of you have ever been to a situation and you've seen a picture and it doesn't look like anything in reality of what the picture says? Well, this one turned out just right. So thank you, sir, all right? We were gonna keep you on this front row to make sure that it did turn out like this, okay? South Campus, I got a, uh, I received a text message in the middle of the night, like I always do, uh, from Mr. Denny, all night, every night, and he says the parking area is done. So we can actually park there, and uh, I, I was excited because we know where it came from. Uh, how many of you were at the uh, middle school when we had to give you car wash coupons because we had your car so dirty? All right, so we took care of you and do not come to our office for car wash coupons now because it's done. This campus is absolutely amazing. Uh, it puts into perspective of how we care about children. It shows that we love them, we value them, we want them to be happy, we want them to be safe. But I have to tell you, we did receive a lot of flack from people all over the country asking us, are you really not going to have a cafeteria? And we stayed bold and we stayed ambitious about it and we said, no cafeteria. So imagine you were building a new house and you wanted one of your rooms to be 30 by 30. Well, you only have so much square feet. One of those rooms would probably have to be a 10 by 10. So we decided to eliminate the cafeteria so that we can enlarge our educational space. And we found out something from the students that was absolutely amazing. They said, Superintendent, this makes us feel like we're in college. It makes us feel like we're on a university campus. It gives us the idea that there is some autonomy in our life and we don't have to have these 50 armed guards standing around in the cafeteria watching us eat all day. So it freed up some FTEs for us, gave our students some flexibility, made them feel proud of their environment, made them understand that we believe that they can be very, very responsible. So the distributed dining area is the way to live. So for all the people who doubted us uh, in the education world, now they're calling us 
asking us, can you tell us about distributed dining? And we're excited because I believe Mr. Denny and I are going to be speaking at South by Southwest talking about distributed dining. And hopefully it will go off great. Uh, we will see. But it, it's a bold approach. But it's a bold approach that's about children. So distributed dining was never about the adults. It was about the children. And if we keep everything focused about the children, then our world turns out great. So I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to come to a football game, Eastern Cincinnati Conference. That's our league. And we were very, very thrilled to get into the league. It took us a while to get there. But we were the champions of the league. And I know that <laughs> it's Coach Murphy here tonight, today. Coach Murphy, stand up, Coach Murphy. All right, this is our guy. And Coach Murphy has been on my mind because I want him to be extremely successful. He didn't know he called me the other night and he said, Superintendent, we're going to be league champs again. That's what he told me. Right, Coach? Yes, sir. Okay, can I get that a little louder? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. But the ECC, the ECC has been a very, very interesting um, conference for us, and, and I do believe that our kids will prevail. They have played a tremendous, had a tremendous season, and I'm not just talking about football, but all of the sports that we have at Wentwood City Schools. So we're expecting that lacrosse team to be incredible again. Uh, Mr. Twitty, thank you very, very much. And Mr. Reister, where, where's Mr. Reister? Okay, so Mr. Reister is the man behind the scenes with the girls crew. Um, how many of you have ever worked in another district before? Raise your hand if you had girls crew. One person. Another person? All right, get him out of here. All right, no. But girls crew is a very ambitious sport and what we found out is young people, there were millions of dollars left on the table for unclaimed scholarships for girls crew. So we decided that we would go into that arena. So thank you, Mr. Reister, for your diligence in that sport. We have the water, we have the boats, now we have to make sure we get the girls. Thank you. So you heard Ms. Miranda talk a little bit about PPE. PPE is, is part of our life now. Do you wear the mask? Don't you wear the mask? Do you wear it below your nose? Do you wear it on your chin? Do you just let it hang on your ear? Do you leave it inside your car? What do you do with the mask? And I do have to tell you, there was something when I was having the focus groups. Uh, I was in the mall. That's when you had to wear a mask. And, and I was in the mall, and I was walking through the mall, and I'm thinking, it, it must be the suit. It must be how I'm walking because everybody was watching me. And I'm thinking, wow, this must be great. Then I realized they were looking at me like, you don't have on a mask. So how many of you have ever had to go back to the car to get the mask? OK. We have not put out all the information yet because I meet with the epidemiologist and the Center for Disease Control Commissioner uh, Kesterman every Friday along with other superintendents. So we don't want to push information out too soon because, guys, it changes every day. Every single day it changes. We will have it right. We will make sure that it's right for our children and our families and also for you. We're also very, very excited, and you'll see in one of the future slides, that we're going to have a vaccine clinic open for the entire community. I believe it's uh, August 13th. Uh, Ms. Bray, stand up, Ms. Bray. Ms. Bray and Ms. Wilson, Ms. Wilson, stand up. They have been the people coordinating that effort. Uh, and this is for anyone in our entire community, anyone, anywhere. We want to make sure that people get vaccinated. The one thing that people have to understand is we have a great partnership with Mercy. Mercy has said, Superintendent Smith, whatever your community needs, we will do. So we have a vaccine clinic coming on the 13th. And then there's another one. Uh, 21 days thereafter.
Collaboration is our thing. That's what we do. That's how we do it. And our young people have learned to collaborate with others in ways that you never would have imagined. Teachers, please raise your hand if you ever had a group of students do a presentation in the modulars, the trailers, at any time. All right, was it fun? It was like a nightmare. So I believe the trailers were supposed to be here for several years and they ended up being, how many years, Mr. D? 25 years. That was a mobile home park. It wasn't a trailer. <laughs> so now our students get a chance to present in soundproof rooms. I've been in this building and we've had meetings on the second floor while students are uh, interacting on the first floor and I can tell you I heard nothing. So to the engineers, the sound engineers, the technicians that put everything together, you have made this a soundproof gym. Thank you very much for all of that work. PBL, it's our thing. That's what we do. We do it because we believe it's the right thing for our children. Our children have become more articulate. They have become more confident. They have become more independent by being students in this world called project-based learning. I'm excited because I heard from some new teachers about PBL, and believe it or not, they understand the work already. And they sat in front of an incredible panel that told them about some of the initiatives and some of the work that we're going to make sure that every student becomes part of. And you know one thing that we've gotten rid of in our district, and I think it's amazing, when I first came, every time there was a question, people asked, is this for students with disabilities? Students with disabilities are incorporated in our work, so that question doesn't come up anymore because they're part of who we are and what we do. Students had a chance to do something a little different this year. They had a chance to say if that work that you were putting in front of them was engaging. And they graded it. Not literally, but they graded it on a scale of putting a dot matrix based on if they were engaged in the work. Most of the students believe that your teaching, your enhancement to your profession, your honored profession, they believe that you engage them in ways that they could not be engaged before, and I think that's a tribute to the work around project-based learning. They scaled it, graded it, scored it, and I can tell you, we're gonna send this information out to you, but you will be very, very surprised of how they said, what they said about how you have engaged them in this work. They believe that they're in the right vein, and we've even had some students come back from college several years ago who said PBL helped me become a better student on my campus. PBL helped me become a better person at my job. PBL helped me become a better person in my work with the military. Is Hannah Van Dyke here? Hannah. She is one of our original PBL students and she came back because she knew I was here. And Hannah, you had an amazing year, and we hope that you have another great year coming, coming forward. Thank you very, very much. Next two. Move forward. There we go. Anybody have heard of uh, Nusela or Nusela? I heard a presentation from this company last year with my administrative team, and they showed me something that I thought was amazing. Anyone in the room ever read something by Chaucer or Thoreau? Just, okay. And in some cases, that text can become complex. What Nusla or Nuzella does, it would take a complex text that's written probably on a college level where students are in class and then they would actually use certain standards and break the text down that a student who may struggle who might be on a fifth grade level would understand that complex text. 
It is absolutely that versatile. That's why we selected it, because it will bring our students up to speed to make sure they understand all of the state standards. So we're excited. Mrs. Bray, can you come up to the podium, please? And Mrs. Jordan, can you give her a mic on the way up? We had this all-out fitness challenge. And we had some superstars who prevailed. Uh, they made it all the way through. Uh, they said the nice Mrs. Bray that they know to love and care for is not that same person when she's in that gym. So she's going to give some awards to people who prevailed during this all-out fitness challenge. I think what would have been very impressive because of the All, all Out Fitness Challenge, if you would have stood, let me, let me show you. If you could have stood right here and then backflipped all the way to get the mic. Good morning, good morning. Over the summer, we had the Warrior Fitness Challenge and I can tell you, I had an amazing time. Although um, some people didn't like me during um, the fitness workouts, I will tell you, it definitely um, enhanced our physical, physique, and fitness, and also with our mental health. Um, we had a number of people that participated, whether it was one session or all nine sessions. Um, I am truly grateful for all the participants that were willing to come out after work and give it their all. Um, we had a number of um, certificates that we awarded to folks, but I wanted to um, award the perfect participation awards to those um, employees that showed up every session and really gave it their all. So first, before I do that, can everyone who participated, whether it was one session or nine session, can you please stand so everyone can see you? Stand up. So we had almost 40 participants that showed up throughout the summer, um, but we did have um, a number of people that had perfect attendance. So when I call your name, come up to receive your awards. Andrea Telez from Food Services. Evelyn Seussberry, one of our paraprofessionals. Lily Smith from our former elementary building. Star Simpson from Food Services. Catalina Rosas from the high school. Rita Kinley from the alternative program. Stephanie Mahan, compliance officer, truancy officer. Gabrielle Johnson from former ES. Congratulations and thank you for your continued efforts in physical fitness and mental health. Stand right there. So they can get a picture of you. Yes. And then we had two buildings um, where they had the most participation from their employees in their buildings. So when I call the building names, and these are the former buildings, can the principals come up to receive their building awards? I can take Lily's. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so, 
it was a tie. So the first building we want to recognize is Primary North. Can the principal from Primary North come up? And also the principal from the elementary building, Nelson Holman. So I really want to truly thank um, Mark Doctor who provided smoothies um, after every single workout. They were delicious. Um, some of them were non-dairy um, for those who were um, allergic. And then I also want to thank uh, Mr. Smith for providing this opportunity. Um, everyone that participated received free t-shirts, free yoga mats, and um, of course, um, the benefit of being trained and being physically fit. So our goal is to hopefully do this throughout the school year and um, next summer. So thank you again for your participation. I had a great time, and I hope you did as well. Thank you. Thank you. Turn it back to Ms. Stewart. Stage left. Stage left. Way to go. Good job. Fantastic. I like to. Uh, I've got a. I've got a prop. A prop man out there. Mr. Dixon, can you can you stand and kind of stand in the aisle a little bit so they can see you, please? Guys, during the physical challenge, Mr. Dixon weighed 475 pounds. <laughs> Look at that guy now. Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. All right, way to go. He's my hero. All right, this next thing that you're about to see, um, it's, it's kind of scary, but it, it turned out okay. So, Ms. Jordan, Ms. Jackson, and Mrs. Denny and myself, we were actually getting ready for uh, the ribbon cutting ceremony at the South Campus. And I turned my back on them for one second, and, and they grabbed hula hoops, and this is a short video, folks, because the hula hoop challenge was supposed to be who could keep the hula hoop on for uh, at least one minute. You will notice that it didn't happen. So Mrs. Denny, can you run it please? So they had excuses, but they had excuses like, my jacket is too white, my uh, shirt is too blue, my skirt is too black, and this, so they just quit on me. So give them a round, please. When we were getting ready for convocation, uh, we put that in, and Mrs. Denny assured me, I can't find the clip. It won't work. I don't think I can get it to work. And I said, call Rhonda Hobbs. And they were friends before this. I don't know how they are now, but uh, the hula hoop contest is, is going to prevail. The other thing, uh, I, I meant to tell you, there are hula hoops in the back. And in case someone can um, take that challenge on, we'll try you later on in the, in the show. All right. Operating levy. You heard Ms. Miranda speak about funds. Folks, if we had enough funds, we would never ask our community for levies, to pass levies. We've tried this several times, and we're working, we're going to work with our community of Forest Park, Green Hills, and Springfield Township to do a com combined interest. And our combined interest is We've been trying to get operation levies passed, and they've been trying to get community centers and rec centers to be part of what, who we are. We're going to work diligently to combine with them, and hopefully that brings us together. Uh, you, have, you hear people in different communities and schools saying, I want to be more like Mason. I want to be more like Lakota. I want to be more like Springfield. I want to be more like Talawanda. Well, one day, people are going to say, I want to be more like Winton Woods. So stay tuned for our combined work with helping us solidify our community and collaborate together.
Here are a few quotes from some of our brand new teachers. And I'll read a couple of them. And they did a series uh, in a workshop. And I'm going to see, Ms. Jordan, can you come up for a minute? I have it. I have it. All right. So, Anne Marie, where are you? All right, very good. Anne Marie, stand up for a minute. So, this is what Anne Marie says. My dad showed me the impact you can have on students and also the highs and lows that come with teaching. I accepted this job because I want to show students that school is a place to become their best selves. I will encourage my students to grow as an eventual individual. Ooh, okay. My type master. And as a class and be inclusive to all. Anne Marie. Very good. I wanted to teach students and be the role model they can relate to. I wanted to be part of a district that would push me to be the best I could be. I will encourage my students to dream big and think outside the box. Durrell, where are you? Okay. Where's Heather? Now there's more than one Heather here, so... Um, since this is so prolific, I don't want another Heather trying to steal her stuff. I love working with children and helping them develop their love of learning. I accepted this job because of how welcoming everyone is, and I feel like I am a great fit. I will encourage my students to do their best, their absolute best. Heather. Thank you, Heather. I was called. I was called. Where's Rachel? Okay, so this is not just reading about new teachers and their attitude. This is checking to see if they showed up for convocation. All right, so I just want to let you know. All right. I was called to work with young children. I was led to Winton Woods through prayer. I will encourage my students to always try their best and encourage each other. Rachel, thank you very much. I chose this profession because serving our youth is my greatest calling. I chose this job because I love children. I love teaching children how to read. Where's Kristen? Way to go, Kristen. I will encourage my students to set their high goals, hold themselves accountable, and most of all, find joy in learning. Kristen. Now, when I first started reading that, Kristen Twitty tried to stand up. I'm like, no, guy, you didn't write that. All right, that was somebody else. Okay. Where's Monica? Okay. You ready? You sure? All right. This is how you feel. All right. I've always wanted to be a teacher. It is who I am. I accepted this job because the idea of project-based learning is exciting to me. I will encourage my students to try to not be afraid to fail and do and to celebrate who they are. That's Monica. Now you guys do know that since I'm reading these quotes and they're from you, if these quotes ever become published, they're mine. So I just want to let you know, this is my control. Because of the kids and to make a change in the world, I accepted the job because he was providing me with a unique opportunity to teach in a non-traditional setting. I will encourage my students to have a voice. Brianna. In the back. Being a part of the special education realm as a lifelong pursuit and very close to home, family members, friends with disabilities help me know we are all connected and I can be a bridge between home and school to show understanding and meet goals. Eddie. Where's Eddie? To positively impact the lives of young people and make a difference, it's a great opportunity in a district with great changes happening. I will encourage my students to make a positive difference, not only in the classroom, but the community. Spencer. When I was in school, my teachers made me believe I could reach my goals. 
and I want to do the same for kids. I was so excited for an opportunity to teach in a PBL environment to really set kids up for success, successful futures, Aubrey. Okay, so I had a conversation with two members of the WWTA. They are bold, courageous, very, very nice. They love children. And that was Ms. Bretts and Ms. Baker. And they came to my office and they said, Superintendent, we like how the district is run, but we would like to get back to our family atmosphere. We would like for it to feel more like a family. And I'm always saying that this is a business. So now we have a new lease on life. This will be called a family business. All right? That's what we'll do. We will treat it like a family business with the whole goal of the family business being successful. So Ms. Bretz and Ms. Baker, thank you. I appreciate you. We have this new design called NCLB. And NCLB stands for No Committee Left Behind, okay? We even have a food truck committee. And I would like for the members of the food truck committee to please stand. Uh, Mrs. Jordan, Mr. Denny, uh, Mr. Doctor, who else was on that committee? There was someone else. Ms. Wilson? Ms. Wilkie, where's Ms. Wilkie? All right, she's like, okay. So this is, the, the, we had a food truck committee, and one of the things we wanted to do is celebrate with you this, this afternoon that when this convocation is over, uh, you'll have your ticket, and you'll go out to the food truck, and you'll enjoy a meal, and it's gonna be absolutely exciting. The one thing about your ticket, though, please be very, very careful about your ticket. If you lose the ticket, no worries, no problem. Your other ticket will cost $375, okay? So if you lose your ticket, it's okay. You've heard us talk about the CLC, but people call the CLC different things. It's actually called the Community Learning Center. And one of the original Community Learning Centers was at uh, Euler School in um, Cincinnati Public Schools, all right? We are working diligently with our partners with Mercy to create a CLC in both of our communities. It will be there for vision, it will be there for, for hearing, it will be also there for dental. And we will be able to take care of our students when they come to school so that they don't have to miss school. So think about all the trials and tribulations connected with the pandemic. We would be able to have our own vaccine clinic right here on site every single day if we had the CLC in operation. So the goal is to make sure that we have a CLC in both communities in the new campus that's work being worked on right now that was the former intermediate building. There will be a CLC there. And there will also be a CLC in the, on the south campus. So we're going to serve both communities very, very well. So look forward to that in the near future. So, the future home of Wittenwood City Schools. And right in front of you, in that picture, that used to be the high school. The high school is demolished, and now we're going to create an incredible green space, an incredible opportunity with luscious trees and walkways and pathways and all kinds of things. One of the things that I really wanted us to remember is we're about 12.5 square miles, Winton Woods City School District. And I remember having a conversation with the board several weeks ago that we'd like to turn our community into an athletic complex where there's softball fields, soccer fields, all kinds of different opportunities for kids and for families to enjoy walking tracks, uh, bike trails, everything like that. Uh, we're probably one of the few communities that, have the, that has the land to do it, and so we're gonna push hard with our community leaders to make this dream come true, where we're talking about the recreational expansion throughout the district for a variety of our students' needs. The 
early childhood central campus that you've been hearing about that's under construction, uh, we're going to make sure that it kind of rivals our campuses that we have now. So we're working closely with Ms. Stiles and her team to talk about some of the amenities that will be there uh, in order to make sure that our little warriors actually has some of the other opportunities that our big warriors have. I think it, would be, it wouldn't be a f appropriate to have our children in a school that we wanted to transition out of, and now we're talking about putting them into something different uh, in the future. So we want the future and the present to represent each other. The community center collaboration, the rec center that I've talked about. I could see our students collaborating with elderly people in the community, making quilts, sharing those quilts with young people along the way, and creating a environment that says we are comprehensive and we are cohesive to make sure that Winton Wood City Schools is reaching out to its community in a way that many districts do not. We have to have a collaborative spirit. We cannot be a separate entity any longer. It is a combined effort that says we are one. So look at the uh, high-fiving at the bingo game. And I think that would just be an exciting addition if that could be part of our tradition where we're talking about opening this recreational facility every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and enjoying our community with bike rides, trail rides, all kinds of things that says we believe in each other and this is a community for the future uh, just to make sure that people understand our goals are collected together. Ms. Denny, can you go back one slide, please? That line dance class actually happens at the community center. And I don't know if you can tell, if you look to your far left, you see two guys there that don't know the steps. That would be Mr. Uh, Day and Mr. Sanker. They're working on it, though. <laughs> look at them very carefully. Mr. Day is trying to concentrate, and Mr. Um, Sanker is tr pretending he doesn't know what's going on. So there we go. Imagine having a food cooking class in the Community Learning Center. That would be absolutely amazing. The other thing, I don't know how many of you have great recipes, but we are actually starting our, we're launching our cookbook very, very soon. And we'd like for all of you to contribute one of your favorite recipes in the cookbook. So we're gonna call, we're gonna have two volumes of the cookbook. Healthy cookbook number one and the other cookbook. All right, that's where you have all the pies and cakes and all those things. And speaking of pies and cakes, how many of you have ever met Amazing Amy? Amazing Amy is one of our students who actually has her own bake shop. She cooks pies and cakes and all kinds of things. She is actually a celebrity in our, in our district, and she's going to be speaking at our ribbon cutting ceremony tomorrow. Amazing Amy has launched her endeavor. She has a food truck, and it's called the Banging Grill. Uh, her food truck will be one of the food trucks out there today, and Amazing Amy is only like in the fifth grade or something, but uh, she has launched her business in such an incredible way. Yes, you guessed it, I am her manager, yes. And uh, Amy, amazing Amy, is going to go a long way. So if you've ever had her pies and cakes and, and whatever, you will get a chance to sample some of her uh, delectable items very, very soon. You know, watching the Olympics, I, I heard something from one of the athletes. And it says, you don't have to be amazing to start, but you must start in order to be amazing. That's you guys. We will start together, and we will be amazing. But adding to our amazing work, I would like to introduce another person who is a former warrior, come back, came back to uh, give us a whole lot of his support and, and his outcomes and his incredible work, and is Carlton Gray here today. All right, stand up, Mr. Gray. Mr. Gray came back to be our defensive coordinator, and he played for uh, Winton Woods. He played for UCLA, San Diego Chargers. 
I, I have the mic, sir. I'm calling it Whitten Woods. I'm calling it what I want to call it. All right. Okay. When you get the mic and we're state champs, you call it what you want to call it. He played for Winton Woods, like I said before. All right. And I met Mr. Gray, and he has an incredible daughter who is also a coach as well. But I met Mr. Gray, and you know how you meet people and you're not that impressed? And it wasn't that I didn't like him. I just thought he was taller than that. So then I realized he has a lot of skills inside of his head. I watch you, Coach, sir, and I think you are going to be a great connection with um, Coach Murphy. Girls basketball? He used to be on our girls basketball team? No, I'm kidding. All right. Yes, coach, girls basketball as well. All right. Keep your head up, sir. It's okay. This is almost over. All right. So that's the, that's the work. You don't have to be amazing to start this work, but you have to be amazing, but you must start in order to be amazing. So you are amazing people. You're going to be amazing to our students. And even that student, even that student who has been at home sitting, waiting, plotting for you, all right, he's going to be amazing with you. He's been waiting for you. You know who he is. Yes, he will be back. I saw his name on the list. He's probably waiting right now by the food truck. Who knows? But that student is coming back because guess what? You gave them something worth living for. You're changing lives every single day. And I am happy to be the leader of the district. I am happy that you're on my team. And I hope that I'm able to support you with all of your endeavors to make sure that your year is going to be 100% successful. Please stay tuned with future emails about what's going to happen with mask and quarantine and vaccines and everything like that because it's sure to come. Uh, this changes like folks like every so many hours, uh, but we're going to try to keep you informed to the best of our ability. And Mrs. Denny, is there more? All right, very good. And as always, go Warriors. Thank you.